very, very surprised, flattered, and uh, proud to be here and to have discovered over these recent years this wonderful agency, Center. Greg Peterson has literally brought Robert Jackson to the attention of the American people in a way that should have been done a long time ago. My own uh, interest in Jackson did stem from the, uh, from the case of uh, the Gobitis children and the fact that they would not salute the flag. And this is how I suddenly found myself surrounded by a, a lot of very nice and very informed people. People who patronize this place, people who support it. And by the way, that's a pretty important thing, supporting it. I live with a woman who leads the effort to pay for the bills at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So I want to about it. Marlo says fundraising is the world's second oldest profession. <laughs> and she says it's just as tiring. No. <laughs> but you can't do good stuff without it. And for all those, and what a magic job um, uh, Greg has done to excite not only a community, but some very, very important people not only in the law, but in political, public life as well. Um, to have Ken Heckler here is an achievement. I'm listening to him this morning. I mean, talk about inspiration. I can't find my keys. And he'll tell you how far it is from Calais to Dover. <laughs> uh, and, and what's the name of the community just down the road? So I am inspired uh, by people who are here in this room who have dined with Harry Truman. We have people here who knew FDR. And look who's speaking to them. Uh, now, if that's not enough pressure, you put Mark Russell in the audience. And then, <laughs> this is a cruelty. Um, I, I have uh, emceed a lot of banquets. Uh, I've talked about fundraising my daughter, when we got married, Danny Thomas stood up and said, I haven't lost a daughter I've gained a fundraiser. <laughs> so, so now, uh, I'm out there trying to tap dance and uh, raise money for the hospital, although I'm not as much on stage and out there as much as uh, Marlo Thomas. I had the pleasure of not only being with Danny, but all his friends. And on more than one occasion, I have been the MC with Danny sitting over here, at the, you know, looking regal with the big cigar. And I'm up here. And I would say, you know, Danny, people are uh, always comparing us. Uh, we both were born in cities on Lake Erie. I was born in Cleveland. My father-in-law was born in Toledo. We both married the most beautiful woman in the world. <laughs> And we both received many honors. My father-in-law was knighted by two popes. And I was recently named Man of the Year by transvestites for a better America. <laughs> so, uh, I am not unfamiliar with, uh, you know, the pressure of retaining the audience's attention. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm good enough to hold my own against the people who, in this room tonight, who have witnessed history. And this is how we, I came to know and to know more about Robert H. Jackson. I was very impressed with the moral courage of the Jacks, of the witness children. Uh, I have the same uh, admiration for a number of other people who came through my life, just to name a couple. I thought Benjamin Spock was a saint. Here was a guy, he had more money than God, 
uh, you know, baby and child care sold almost as much as the Bible. Every mother of my baby bearing generation had Dr. Spock's book. And you remember the, the thin tie and the, uh, the blue uh, vest, you know, the very patrician guy. And he'd go to jail to oppose the Vietnam War. And he was in a cell with a toilet sticking out of the wall. He, he would explain this to the audience. He had to kick the wall to make the toilet flush. Ben Spock. I couldn't get over that. And I'll tell you something else I remember. And this is all consistent with suddenly my fascination with the Jehovah's Witnesses. There were gay guys on the, on the Donahue show before Stonewall in the 60s when nobody was out. And I was scared to death. Hey, people would maybe think that uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, the, uh, the second caller said, how's Phil look to you? And the guy said, I think that's an irrelevant question. And he moved on to the next step. But this was 1960. And they were out there in public saying, yes, I am. What's it to you? And why do you have these feelings about me? And you don't even know about us. And you haven't even challenged yourself. What is it about? And I mean, these wonderful statements by powerless people on the Donahue Show talking about their longing to be full Americans, just as we consider ourselves. And I thought, wow, if he can do that, then I can, you know, so a couple of people, you know, a woman came up to me downtown Dayton right after the show, and she said, well, birds of a feather. <laughs> this is the kind of, of pressure that obtained to the large, uncounted millions of gay people in this country. And it was the Supreme Court who finally came out from behind the bench. And they shot down anti sound laws in Lawrence v. Texas. I mean, there were laws that said you could not have consensual sex in the privacy of your own home if you were gay. And I mean, cops would wait for the gay guys to come home and and by the way, I don't know what the, I'm not sure what probable cause would be. You know, how are you going to catch these people, you know? You can't knock on the door. And is it probable cause that the light is on in the bedroom or off? So you have to break the door. Now, what's going on in here? Now it's up to us. What kind of country do you want? And it was the Supremes. Anthony Kennedy, a Catholic, by the way, who finally took the bench and spoke for the majority. And among the many things he said was that there are some places in a person's life that the state may not go. And when he read, when he said those words from the bench, the gay and lesbian lawyers from the ACLU who argued for the petition dropped their heads and softly wept. This is how noble we can be. By the way, we still have two Supremes who believe that if a state wants to establish anti sodomy laws which prohibit consensual intimacy between gay people, that is constitutionally permissible to do so. Scalia and Thomas. Now we come, now this, all this experience that I had certainly set me up for the Robert H. Jackson Center, Greg Peterson, and the Jehovah's Witnesses. I just happened to fall into the witness issue, and I read a lot about it, and I couldn't get over what I was reading. So give me just a moment to review here. 